Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? How are you? Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. My son is having a meltdown in the other room. My, <laughs> my son loves singing. He loves singing. My son loves singing. And um, he's having a meltdown because I had to start this podcast. And of course, I'm in the house because I haven't built my new studio yet. So my son is losing his ish because he was singing karaoke. And my wife sets it up right before I start the podcast. It's like, why would you set up karaoke for when you know I'm about to do a podcast? I'm so confused right now. So I was texting her, oh, just move it to your room. Then I won't be able to hear him. But literally, he is right outside my door trying to sing karaoke. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, hope all is well. Welcome to the Michael Yo Show. My name is Michael Yo. Hey, Natalie. Look at you guys checking in. Lamar, Natalie, Kayla. Take a second for you guys to come in. You know, in the meantime, while you're checking in right now, you know I got to give it to you. I got to play the intro. I haven't played it in a while. Yeah, and you know this. I mean, spread the word. San Francisco, June 11th and 12th, Cops Comedy Club. Just found out I'm going to be in Denver. Once that's confirmed, I'm very excited. I'll be in Denver and in San Francisco. San Francisco first, June 11th and 12th, and I think, and I'm guessing here, July 8th through 10th, I'm going to be in Denver. I love Denver, man. I love Denver. I'm going to have a blast up there. I got a lot of friends up there. Alice Khan, what up? Abhishek, man, Abhishek. Abhishek, by the way, lives in India. And I know in India right now, it's going crazy, Abhishek. I know you guys are in the struggle right now. How is it, Abhishek? Let me know. What You know, we see on TV that overcrowding, uh, the vaccines are short. Is all that true, Abhishek, in India? He always checks in every day. That's Abhishek right there. Let me know. What's going on, Abhishek? Very excited today. Bridget, what's up? Kayla, what's up? Just checking in. Uh, is it possible you say a very well done to my youngest, Ava? She received a student of the week certificate. She's on. Natalie, Ava, little nine year old girl, what's up? Student of the week, congratulations. It's all love. It's all love. Congratulations, Ava. We're so proud of you. Everybody hit up Natalie. Wish Ava, congratulate her. This is what the Yo Fam is all about. We spread love. Abhishek just hit me back up. He goes, yep. I see my boy Eric Griffin in the waiting room right there. About to bring you on, homie. Abhishek, uh, he says, yep. Vaccines are short. Hospitals are overcrowded. More true. Oh, he says more true than fake news. So he says pretty much everything we're seeing on TV is true in India. He's in, the, he's, he's in it. He's in it. He's been checking in long before they had their big pandemic scare. Congratulations going out to Ava. Okay, so I want to bring in this guy because let me just bring him in right now. Uh, Eric Griffin. Hey. What's up, man? First of all, hey. Can want, you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you great. You sound good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I want to tell people why I like you so much. All right. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, we've had conversations, but that green room experience where you let me pop in on your show was really where we got to actually hang and kick it. And yeah, I got yeah, really... that's for, for yeah, yeah, that was you the know, first time we've talked a lot, but that was the first time we actually like went to eat and eat. we just talked about life. Yeah, <laughs> and and I love our ideals about life, and I love how we disagree on a lot of things, but. We both make points and then move about our business. I don't get mad at you. You don't get mad at me. Yeah, and I don't really think we disagree all that much. Actually, no, we you know, don't. I don't. We, but I don't I think, think it's a disagreement. Like we, even if we come in at things from a different angle, I don't really think we disagree. I mean, listen, I just feel like not to cut you off, but I'm just saying. I think most people. 
you know, like when you look, just let me just relate it to comedy. So, like when uh, when you see a finished comedy set, you know, and then maybe you think it's funny or you think it's a point that you uh, go, oh, I really relate to what this person is talking about. It took a long time to get to that point. It took a lot of practice, and so then you see this finished product. Most people aren't as smart as they think they are. Most people aren't as brilliant as they think they are. And so and so uh, when you're having a conversation, a lot of times you're not really expressing necessarily at the highest level of, of the point you're trying to make. And so like sometimes when you're having these conversations with people, you know, sometimes we're just not articulating the points. That's why you should really converse with someone and take a long time, like sit down for dinner for an hour, because if you really give yourselves the opportunity, you might realize, oh, we actually are saying the same things. Just what I'm saying in my head it, it don't sound like what you're saying that, are, that the words that are coming out of your mouth but after we sit and talk and we go oh well we we overall we feel the same way we mean the same things and so i just think the, the point i'm trying to make is like you got to give you got to give your fellow man and woman time to really get their thoughts and things out because we're just not as brilliant as we think we are well what I, what i think is um I, you know, I get hit up a lot because I'm black and Asian. So it was all about Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate. And I get hit up a lot like. Man, you, that's, just, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> man, you a get a lot, lot of, of you pressure. Your shoulders, man. <laughs> man, I, I, and you know, both movements want me to talk about it. But I kind of took a note from Dave Chappelle where it's like, I'm not going to talk about that stuff unless it's on a podcast where you hear everything not take a clip and then post because you got evidence of what I really said. So well, I would never gonna, do it. They're going to they're gonna do that anyway. They, they're still going to do that anyway. So They're going to do that, but you have receipts though, where yeah. a lot of times you don't have receipts. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, because I could say something a lot of people disagree with and go now, and right after that go, now I understand that side, but this is my thought. But they would just take that yeah. first part. And this right. is kind of what right. we this is kind of what we got in discussion about. First of all, Eric Griffin is on the show. Instead of me intro, how would you like to be? In, or what you know? Because I heard it on Joe I Rogan. Think, and it, it, I, like, would, I would. I would think intro? that. I would say I would think that the your fans who have been here, you know, however many is my mouth in sync, or is, does it look like I'm not? Am I? Is the sound it coming out okay? Sync. No, it looks in sync to me. Okay, okay, okay. It's great. It just oh, all right. You know, I know what it is because I'm looking at you the screen and it's, so it's. Anyways, anyways, I, I've been on your show before. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you have your regular fans. You know, I was on Workaholics, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. I'm a comic. I'm your friend. And here we are. <laughs> okay. So, so um, I want to, okay. So CDC lifted guidelines on masks, right? If you've been vaccinated. And then, and then LA County right away, right away was like, uh, you, it doesn't matter. You still got to wear masks. <laughs> so, so if you vaccinate in Vegas or wherever, if you vaccinate, you cannot wear a mask. Here's a, the no win situation. I'm already, and I haven't seen this, but I know it's going to happen, Eric, and you know it's going to happen too. The people that were complaining about wearing a mask are going to be like, mm -hmm. oh, they're making us wear a mask. And now when they don't have to wear a mask, they're going to say, see, now we wouldn't uh, see how they just said, all of a sudden they said, now we don't have to wear a mask. So they're going to argue on both sides of that fence. And that's what. Yeah, yeah. That's what's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, listen, we've had a lot of misinformation for a, a lot of time a lot, uh, for this oh, whole year. Not to year. cut you off, not to cut you off, but I got to give him a shout. Traeger Grills is watching right now. Love Traeger Grills. I cook on my Traeger Grill all the time. Okay, go ahead. Oh, but you, you know what? That's funny. They about to send me a grill. <laughs> I, man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll, I'll put them back up on the screen. Traeger Grills, if you don't, it's a, I don't get paid for it. I cook all the time. Oh, you got paid it. for it because they sent you a very expensive yeah. grill. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, actually, I had to work for that grill. And oh, I, oh I, wow. Yeah, I did. I did a private comedy Well, I'm working show. for the grill now. Traeger Grills. Get your <laughs> grill. <laughs> no, I had to do a show. I did a private show for them. And instead of, uh, you know, they gave me some money, but they were like, they were like, what else can we do? I was like, I want a grill. So I actually yeah. had to fly up there and do a show, but let me tell you, I use it all the time. Traeger Grills, what's up? I need some. Uh, I need some. Yeah, uh, hit, hit me up, Traeger Grills. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. Uh, what were you saying? Sorry to cut you off. 
Um, no, I'm just saying, you know, we, we, my biggest problem with, uh, throughout this whole pandemic is not having some real information, not having a source where we can go, no matter who it was, maybe if it was like, you know, if it was a uh, Fauci, if it was the CDC, if it was somebody we can go, all right, this person is telling us what we need to know. And I feel like throughout this whole thing, there's been like this misinformation, you know, I feel like, you know, I- Fauci okay, saying sure. one thing, the CDC saying another. You had the, whoever was in charge at the time, Trump, was saying whatever he wanted to say. And we just were like, you know, it, it's just this like, so what we have right now is like mistrust. Like we don't trust the information that we're getting. And now, like, where do we get information from? You know? Okay. So, so this is interesting. You're talking about that because I don't believe there was misinformation out there. I believe there was a lot of uneducated people that wanted to follow their drum. You know, I believe you always should listen to Fauci. And people will go, well, Fauci at the beginning said you don't need to wear a mask. Yeah, because at the beginning, you learn that people acting like you just stay in this vortex of not learning anything as the virus goes on. They didn't know what to do when I was in the hospital, Eric. They had no idea. Now you go to the hospital, they have an idea of what to do. So Fauci saying at the beginning, you don't have to wear a mask. In a month reversing that, when they found out more facts about it, that's what's, mm. that's what's so crazy to me is people... Are, especially during a pandemic where they learn something new every day, every week, every month, people going, well, the first thing you said, you didn't have to wear them because we didn't know enough. And once they found out more information, so people that are listening to Trump, people are listening to other, their local news stations or whatever news they want to watch. That's, that's on you. That's not misinformation. You're just not being educated on it. So that's how I yeah. Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, we hire, uh, we vote people into office because we're not that they're, they're supposed to represent the people they, they go and, you know, we're not I'm not qualified to be the president of the United States. So I vote someone in who I think is qualified and then I have to trust that person's views and opinions all the way down the line, governors, all these kinds of things. So what I'm saying is if we live in a country where there's a state that has decided that all right we're we're just going to be open and then another state who's made a completely different choice that's what i mean about misinformation even if there's truth in all of it there didn't seem to be a uniformed thing we can go well here's the person we need to listen to so i'm not saying fauci was wrong let me let me finish i'm not saying fauci was wrong or he didn't say anything like that he was like i'm saying there was just a lot of misinformation out there along with the the truth because like well, like for instance, the, the governor of, of Florida got a lot of slack got a lot of slack. One, because he's Republican, okay? And two, liberal media and a lot of woke pr- progressive type people were were like, you know, uh, you know, getting on his case because he was just because he was Republican. But when you read about the guy, it turns out he actually is really hip on science. He was actually listening to the science. He was actually reading a lot of things about the science and he made some choices based off what he believed was going to be right. Turns out he wasn't that wrong. Turns out okay. how he did it wasn't wrong at all. Agreed. <laughs> so Agreed. It, wor- it worked out in his case, but I don't like the way, and I'm independent, but I don't like, I love when people use the word woke, they use it for just the left side. Look, when Republicans, when people disagree with Republicans, they get woke too, and they feel like they're being attacked too. So let let oh, yeah, no, everybody, everybody no 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 CD don't put words in my mouth. Everybody woke is a woke is a term used for people that can't articulate their position. Because yes, if, I agree. Cause, I agree. Because if you say because if you say um, if you say I'm pro life, and I say why are you pro life, and you can say well because I'm woke, and if I say, if you say well I'm pro choice, why are you pro choice? Because I'm woke. But that's I'm just never, a catch up. That's a catch all for people to, to that's a catch all for people to say they don't know how to express what they feel. So they say, well, I'm I'm in the right because I'm woke. That's why they say woke. No, so I agree yeah, with okay. you. It's for both okay. sides. <laughs> I but but here's the thing here. I've never heard a person maybe I'm in different circles than you. I've never heard a person go, Oh, well, I think because I'm woke. I've never heard it oh. used like that. I've <laughs> yeah, I hear that all the time. Heard, I was I, I'm, 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 I'm on stage. I'm, I've been on stage telling a, telling a joke, and a girl was in the crowd looking at me like, Mm-mm. "I say, what's wrong with you? You don't think this is funny?" She goes, "No, I'm woke." Oh, well, I've never heard that in real life. Uh, but but let's yeah. go back yeah. to your point about missing. I have. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> Let's go back to your point. And you, know, you know what? I've heard that because I'm woke, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's go back to your point about misinformation. Now, we vote somebody in, but when that person is given misinformation, doesn't it start at the top? So why yeah, that's you, my whole, if it starts that's my at whole the point. top, why are you, why? But, but that's my whole point. But, but the blind can't, but you gotta have some common sense too. Like you knew this dude wasn't giving you facts. When yeah, all yeah, the but, scientists but, were going against. So this is the point where you can't always listen to people. You have to be smart about it, too. You know? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what uh, that has to do with what I'm saying. My, that's my whole point about having misinformation. Like the, the whole the whole point is like when you have look, the, the, the news media is supposed to be a fourth branch of government. The news media is supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to, you know, tell the truth, spew the facts, and help keep everybody in check. But we can't trust them either. You but know, we got thing, but okay, okay. But see, and that's where we get our and that's where we get our information from. But this is but this is you education know? again. News is not like that. So you need to have common sense to know if you watch Fox, CNN, MSNBC, it's not facts. It's facts that support their case, and then they give all their opinions on it. Now, if you're actually exactly. taking it as real news, that's on you. Because you know how it is, you know. Yeah, I mean? wait a minute. Hold hold on a second. You you make it you making it sound. So then, where are you getting your information from? I research. I read. I and actually. From, wait, what, what, I what, are you, what are you reading? To, I don't. What are you reading? I don't listen to opinion pieces. I will get facts from the news, from, but I don't listen to the where people get caught up in the opinion of things more. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you getting your? information from networks all three networks but i don't listen to the you making it sound like you have some like alternate place that you go oh here's the facts i'm gonna read read, where these read more where they read what what do you read what do you tell us what are you reading where what what is this thing you're reading i read wall street journal i read new york (laughs) times i read so this is i I mean i'm telling you i'm telling you but you're mad at what i'm reading see this is what i No, because you made I'm like I just said the news media the news media if, if there's like all this different so you're taking you're getting your information from the same place everyone else is getting their information from but you're saying you're smarter than all of us and you're discerning no, between so you, all of these different news media that no. I, I have common sense so I can grab the truth from all this stuff no Listen, see, Mike, you didn't listen to everybody, anything I said see if you're gonna you talk over me I can't, I, if you're gonna talk over me you I can't just like, said that no I wait said, a minute wait no. a minute wait a minute no. you just said I read Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let, let me repeat can what I you say just what said. I said. No, you, you said I read. I get my facts. Okay, so where, where? Are you telling me you getting your facts from the same place as I'm saying? Let me know. Let me know what I can talk. You let I'm me know. Try, I, thank you, thank you. Let me finish. You said I read and I, I get my facts. I do my research, and I said, where are you getting this research from? And you're telling me that you're getting your research from the same places that everyone else is. That's the look. There's a, still a lot of misinformation. Not everybody can discern between the Wall Street Journal, the L.A. Times. Uh, you know, the, the CNN is uh, is 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 opposing what Fox is saying. Fox is opposing what CNN is saying. The Wall Street, like all of these places, are biased news media places now. And what I'm saying is that no, no, provides no, no. You, a feeling of misinformation. Can yeah, I, 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 can, I, can I finish? I'm about to finish. Oh my I was God, just finishing so my point. Long. Make your point. No, so let's I, go. You, I, I just finished, and then you, you cut kidding? me off before I could go. Boom. Okay. <laughs> so what you fail to remember, which everybody that's watching can go back and rewind it and watch it, is I said I digest the news from all those outlets, but I don't listen to the opinions because people on these networks they will say the truth, but then they will spin it. They will spin it when they start conversating. They actually say really the news when they present the real facts behind the story. But then they, when you get into the conversations, they spend, I don't listen to the opinions of it. Fox News, a lot of times they say facts, but it's facts that support their claims. But once I hear those facts, I don't listen to the pundits because that's what fire people up. The facts do not fire people up. What fires people up are these pundits that keep talking and spinning on all sides, on all sides. That And that's what gets you fired up, and that's what gets you to watch. If Dr. Fauci said, hey, we used to a month ago you have to wear a mask, you don't have to wear a mask, and now you have to wear a mask. 
I don't need 90 different people telling, well, he said before you had to wear it. So that's what gets people fired up. And that's in news knows that's what gets people watching. You think if the news on cable just gave facts and no opinions, people would watch it? No, they are listening for the opinions and that's where we are. So like I said before, before you went into your long tangent, Eric Griffin, I said- I know, but you I actually, get, you really, uh, okay, you so think I'm you made a point talking, right now. I'm still talking. You didn't really make a point right now. I'm still, you, I did make a point. <laughs> I did make, you can watch the news and get the facts, but not listen to the opinions because the opinions have nothing to do with the facts for you. Okay, now, you, all you just said was, it's the same thing that I just said before this. <laughs> You're, you're looking at the same things and you're saying to all your listeners, hey, guys, I know how to discern between facts and opinion. And you should be able to do that, too. And all I'm telling you is not everyone. If, if, if you're just at home, you're, you're like regular people, man, are not comedians who are like analytically looking at everything. A lot of people, you when you look at the news at night. You want to think the thing, the story that they're telling you right now is the story that, okay, so this is true what they're saying. Sometimes they have these headlines, right? And then the headlines are opposite of the information that's inside the story. Because like you say, the headline is to grab people's attention and make them look. News outlets do this all the time now. Wall Street Journal, LA Times, they sensationalize these things. All I'm saying is, so... Just because you're saying to us, hey, well, I know how to like look at something and I know how to go. Well, this is the facts and that's not the opinion. Not everyone's doing it like that. And all I'm talking about is overall, there's still a lot of misinformation because there's so much information out there mixed in with people's opinion. That, like, like I said earlier, in, but when the first in the first thing I said is we're not in disagreement. OK, like you really think you made some articulate point. That's the funny part about it. All you said was. I get the same information from everyone else, but I know how to discern between facts and fiction and opinions. Okay, no. that's great. You, where, you, where you, like you didn't you say said, that. No, no, no. You made another point for me. You said a lot of headlines are clickbait, correct? Yes. But I actually read the article to get the facts right. of it. Because, where that's okay, what well, I'm my, saying, and it goes back everybody to is it. not everybody can discern between facts and fiction like you, Mike. Not everyone's able to do that. A lot of times you want to just yes, be, look are. at the people who are in charge. Yes, you want to look, are. look, do you, let me everyone ask you this. Can do, do you it think, if they want. Do you think Fauci was at all being, at all being influenced by what Trump wanted him to say or not say when Trump was in office? Do you think that he was like walking on eggshells at all? Because he wanted to, because if this guy had an idea of what he thought was right or wrong, you don't, you, you, you do you think Fauci was in lockstep with what no, Trump he wanted? He wasn't in lockstep with Trump because he actually went against Trump many times. And Trump came to a point where he said he didn't, he don't listen to Fauci. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So no, he didn't right. walk in lockstep with him. Right. Exactly. Thank you for making my point. So when the leader of the country, if you voted for Trump, the 70 million people who voted for him to be their leader and their leader is saying, I disagree with this guy, Mike, that my friend is misinformation. Thank you for making my point. That is ignorance for believing him. When there's you, so okay. many facts. When I'm, so, so, I'm on, sorry that not everyone is as smart so as you, Mike. I'm sorry that not every so like, like the, the, you're so doing exactly of, what Hillary oh Clinton God. did. I can't no, Mike, that. listen to me. Listen to me. You're doing exactly what Hillary. Me. You're doing exactly what Hillary Clinton did. It's exactly why she didn't get elected. She's well, saying presidency. She's saying, "Hey, you idiots! Hey, all you dummies! All you, uh, 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 all you. What, what was that word she used to to alienate all those people? Hey, you. Uh, uh, what was it? Desirables or what, whatever the word she the used. Horrible. She said to all." No, hey, all you deplorables who want to vote for Trump, all you dummies, don't you? And then they were like, yo, we're not dumb. Uh, we, we have reasons why we voted for this guy. All I'm telling you is if all these people believe in him and he is saying, he is saying, I disagree with Fauci. And you're trying to sit here and say, well, they're dumb. They should listen to the facts. They I'm should, saying, I'm saying, it's misinformation. Yeah, yeah. Why I'm are you saying, denying that that's misinformation? I'm saying, <laughs> listen to the facts, not the president that 
excuse everything his way. You exactly said what I'm trying to say. You, and you're saying, don't listen to the president, listen to the facts. Yes, absolutely, 100%. I'm saying, listen to the facts. Yeah, but, but Mike, how are you supposed to know what's facts and what's fiction? How are you supposed Common to know? Sense. Common sense. <laughs> oh my Especially God, that's such a, when there's such so a much catch all thing. I don't understand why you don't understand. I, 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 I listen, we're not all as smart as you, Mike. I'm sorry that oh you think God. everybody is this smart. No, no, you're the one, you're yeah, the one yeah, saying, like, you're, you're using catch all words, like, guys, just use common sense. Common sense is for huh. you, don't listen to the president. Read the facts from news media places like, and, and discern you're, you're, in between these things. I don't know why you don't see that. Like, not everybody is, is doing it like I'm that. Saying, I'm hey, saying. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I'm saying like, yes, do some research. Try to figure out what the truth is. What I'm saying is there's a lack of trust from people about where the truth is coming from. If you have to do that, like it shouldn't be that, like, well, listen, when I was a kid, and maybe we should have been doing it then too, obviously, because when you look back on it, the news media has been lying to us uh, from jump. But what I'm saying is there is an idea, there is a feeling that you think the person that is in charge is telling us the truth, whether they are Republican or independent or are or, the or Democrat. You'd like to think that this person is not an agenda. You'd like to think that they have the betterment of the country in their in their thoughts and, and actions. That's what you'd like to think. And what I'm telling you is uh, the people that would say voted for Trump or support him, they think that. They believe that. They believe that this person is giving us the truth. That's why they voted for him. So what I'm telling you is it, if those people hear him say, I don't agree with Fauci. If they've then that's what they're going to believe. They're going to be like, OK, let's go with this. I don't understand why you don't see that. That's also a reality. I'm not it in disagreement, but, but, but I'm not. I never said it wasn't a reality. And I'm that's, saying, but I'm saying that's the misinformation I'm, I'm talking about. Reality. So you're saying you're going to listen to Trump tell a person that's been doing this for 30, 40 years and it's their profession to don't believe them. Hey, that's kind of ignorant. That, yeah, I don't know. Listen, that's kind of ignorant. Listen, I mean, that, I, like, I, I, like, I like, no, no, I don't like, disagree you with talk, you. You just talk. I don't I disagree you don't with agree. you. You make me sound like you just. I I agree with you. You I, you're just not. You're not admitting that like not everybody like that. I said there's misinformation, and your original point was there's no misinformation. All the facts are there. You just have to discern what the facts are. And I'm telling you, that's part of the misinformation that's out there for people. The most people come, most people are not sitting there overanalyzing every single thing. They got their lives in th that are going on. And you'd like to think that the person that's on TV going, hey, let me tell you guys what's going on with this virus. You would like to think, okay, this guy's giving me the truth right now and everything I need to hear. I mean, I, listen, it, look, what we're learning right now is, like you're saying, that's not what we need to do anymore. What we're learning is, hey, everybody out there, you need to dig a little deeper. I don't disagree with you, but you can't deny that there's misinformation out there. I didn't. You no. did say that. You said, you said. No, 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 no. There is, there, <laughs> there are people, okay. People, pre, I, people present misinformation all the time, but the truth is out there if you find it. Okay, Mike, I don't disagree with you. Okay. So I never disagree with you with that. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I don't disagree with you, but all I, you all, we, we went this whole round way to say, and this is exactly what I said in the beginning. People, we 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 don't disagree. You're just coming at it from a different way, and and like I'm not wrong about what I'm saying. There's a lot of information out there. There's so much information out there, but and it's been confusing agree? to do people do from the beginning. Very simple question. But do you agree? If you want to find the truth, you can. I listen. I am not a, what do you, what do you call it a what what is it when you're a virus person? I'm not an immunologist or whatever that phrase is, and neither are you. I don't listen. If That's I was going to get my science information, them. I know That's I know, but I'm saying I'm not them. getting I'm not getting my science information from Michael Yo. That's all I'm saying. Like, exactly. I, and that's how. All right. Exactly. So this is the thing. Um, what's this, what? There was these two scientists. Here, here, here's an example of something. You know, Trump was going. When he was calling it the Chinese virus, you know, he was like, that's Chinese. What all the stuff he was saying? Turns out he wasn't wrong. Turns out that this did start in a lab. Turns out that this well, was like either a mistake. Turns out it was either a mistake. It was like it was a mistake that somebody made. 
it was either, it was a mistake somebody made or you know if you if you're a conspiracy theorist you think somebody released it on purpose it's like you know they, but but either way this wasn't in a wet market you know it turns out that this was something that because of the nature when you what when you talk to those when you listen to the scientists i mean, no my point is when you listen where i'll from? tell you what it matters i'll tell you what it matters oh is because God. This is part of the misinformation that was going on from the beginning. It was everything was listen to Mike. Things were politicized about this virus. And I think that that was wrong. OK, that was wrong. It was about it. Depending on who was saying what made people decide if they were going to believe them or not. And that was wrong. That was part of the misinformation. That was part of like people not figuring out how to discern the truth with whatever facts you're talking about. Like people were ignoring the facts for political reasons. Let me ask and I you think something. that, and I Let think that's what was wrong with the whole thing from the beginning. It's too 100%, politicized. A hundred percent. It was too politicized. But where it comes yeah. from, it, that shit don't matter. It matters how you take care of it once it's here. That's what matters. No, no. Listen, exact, exactly. Exactly. See, you, again, you, you're saying it in a tone like I disagree. First of all, where it came from and how it was dealt with is it, it goes hand in hand because from the beginning, from the beginning, if they would have just said to us, if the news media and, and the government would have said like, uh, if they, uh, what I wanted them to do is come on and be like, there was some sort of unfortunate accident. This is the nature of this. And we're going to work on this. The people in Wuhan or wherever they were, they weren't admitting anything. They weren't helping us figure this out. They were doing their own thing. Then we had our government trying to figure out, okay, well, what are we going to do with this? They didn't know. They had people like you coming to the hospital, and they were like, well, shit, this is our guinea pig. We don't know what to do with this guy. He has this thing. So I'm getting from the beginning, we weren't working together. From the beginning, we weren't making sure everybody had the information they needed to have to figure this out. Then it became a political thing. It became like anti-Trump. It became all this stuff, man. It, it, it became, And what I'm saying is in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all this, like, over politicization, politicization of the virus, not the we couldn't discern between the the right information for the common person, and I think that's what's been the problem. So as soon as Biden came in, I I feel like Fauci immediately was like, "Whoo, now I can really get to what I want to say," and he was like completely he was different after that because I think he felt like he didn't have the pressure of like dealing with like the leader of the country being like, "Stop telling people this" or whatever they were saying behind the scenes. Stop telling you know people I mean? the truth. <laughs> yeah, whatever he was saying, you know what I mean? Okay. So it's like, you know, yes, if that if that but what I'm saying is if you're if you're a person that is like, you know, so before that, before that, you had this force saying this guy's not telling the truth. Even though Fauci's saying whatever he needs to say that is right this whole time, the fact that you had this force making you feel like, well, is this right or wrong? That whole thing in people's head of not being able to discern between what's what. I mean, that's a real problem, man. I don't understand why you can't just. <laughs> all I'm telling you is that well, how, the, the 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 politics of all this has gotten in the way. A hundred percent, I agree with you. That's part, that's part of the misinformation, man. I, that's all I'm saying. That's what I've been saying from the beginning. Is that even if there's truth in the things, how it's being presented has been a problem for people, and it's and it's breeded mistrust. We now have mistrust in the government. You know, we and that's not good. It's not good for a nation, man. We had a freaking insurrection. We had people storming the Capitol. This is not good. It's not good that half the states are like, we don't want vaccines. We got Louisiana turning away vaccines. They're like, yeah, we don't want vaccines. We're fine. And I mean, that's misinformation. That's is that you know, misinformation or is that no education? You're not getting either educated way. about it. Because that's either way, thing. man. That's my thing. Because we're about to jump into something else. But I believe in everything we talk about, from racism to Black Lives Matter to stop Asian hate to anything, education gets people on the same page. It's just people don't want to get educated about. It. And that's all I'm saying. And that's where yeah, no, I, agree. Most, I, I agree, too. It's, it's I, never, where, I never not agreed with that. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of misinformation out there. But if you really want to educate yourself on it. And I got a different outlook on this whole virus thing because I'm in the hospital watching a president say it's a hoax and not knowing yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. a maker. So it's very close to me. So that's why I hold this argument. You know what I mean? No, no, Mike, 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 but we're on the same side. I so that's okay. Okay, Mike. So you're in the yeah. hospital sick. Okay, sick. 
You're in a hospital sick on your deathbed. And the leader of the free world is saying it's a hoax. And you're saying all the people that believe him, like you don't understand that all the people that believe him, that's the part I'm saying, that's the misinformation right there. And you're just saying, guys, just look, you know, look, look, look things up. I mean, not everybody is the, what I'm saying that that in essence is a problem. That's yes, what I'm talking about. All right. That's all I've been saying, Mike. <laughs> all right. All right. If you made it through the first 35 minutes, which you probably did. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is a. Uh, this no, is what I this love, is what Fox, News, this what Fox News does. What are you talking about? You think you uh, you you could, <laughs> nobody wants to watch people agree? You know, like yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so uh, let's yeah, this would rate very high on tell even though we're arguing the same thing because I believe you can agree with somebody but have different points why you agree. So I want to move on to and this is before we even go into this. This is no comedian we're talking about specific. So don't try to connect this conversation. Well, you 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 just just saying that is like you know you did all you, you you might as well just say now. I mean that's like saying that is saying uh, <laughs> you know no, what I mean? It's not. I mean there's there's tons of like there's there's tons of like Dave Chappelle. I mean there's so many comedians that say in our yeah. field. So or this is not. But what I don't want people to confuse it is this is more of the freedom of speech thing where comics can go too far and not too far. Uh, I, it's weird because we just jumped into it on the phone, but how do you want to start this? Because I, I kind of, I definitely want to, I know, I definitely want to jump into it. Okay, let me ask you this. You've been in uh-huh. comedy how many years now? 25 years? 20? About almost 20, I believe it is. 20. So in, you're in, in 2023, years, it'll be 20. So you're 10 years my senior. So you've seen and witnessed a lot more than me. Do you believe a comic has a right to say whatever they want on stage and not be held responsible? No, I, no, but nobody believes that. Nobody, nobody, to me, nobody really believes that. You know, because because for, for instance, I, I my example would be, you know, if you're if you're um, doing a corporate gig, you already know you can't do that. You know, if you're doing a church gig, you you already know you can't do that. So I don't I don't think anyone believes that. Okay, when you're doing your own show at the Comedy Store, Laugh Factory, or wherever you're doing your show. So what you're, you're talking about is circumstances, club, circumstances and environment. Circumstances. I'm not talking about corporate. I'm, I'm talking okay, about at okay. a comedy club. No, 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 no. But I know, but I, I know what you're saying. But even okay. at the Comedy Store, even at the Comedy Store, they have a show called the Roast Battle. Okay, at the Roast Battle, things are said that you might not say at your nine fifteen spot. Yeah, it might. So even there, there is circumstances. There, there's there's circumstances that you 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 could get away with more or less based off that. Like even any comic would be like the jokes I say at roast battle, I might not say in my regular set. I think any comic, even in that circumstance, would 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 uh, would ultimately agree with what I'm saying about that too. So I don't think there's what I'm trying to say to you and to answer your question even directly again is. There is no place and no one that thinks they can say whatever they want, yeah. wherever they want. So how like this is what's dangerous about this whole conversation and about comedy is. Where's the line? then? And 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 when you fire people up because you went across that line. When is it wrong that you went across that guy? Well, when's that line? here's the thing. You know what I mean, here's a. Yeah, no, Mike, I totally understand what you're saying. To me, you know, I, I, I this is the saying I use. Uh, unfortunately, there's always a butt of a joke. And the butt of the joke sometimes gets slapped. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's soft. Sometimes they like it. Sometimes they don't. And that's just the nature of comedy. What we need to start to discern between is intent. So the, the problem right now is how it's being translated. So said comic goes on stage. There's no evil intent. We're in an environment where we're telling jokes and we're trying to be funny. So the person that takes the, the, the stance of, look, nothing's off limits because 
I think ultimately what they're really saying is, hey, I'm just having fun right now. We're going to make fun of everything. And we like to think everybody's on the same page. Now, I think before social media, before all of this, okay, com comedians in comedy clubs was like locker room talk. Okay. Uh -huh. And I yeah. think that whatever happened in that room stayed in that room, no matter what it was. And it was like, oh, we're just having fun. And this is what we're saying. We might say something inappropriate, but the people there know they're like, ah, this guy. Or even somebody would be like, oh, this guy isn't funny. This is terrible. And when they leave, they leave and it's done. When you add social media, when you add a platform that this can now go to the masses, now you have to be accountable for the things that you say. Unfortunately. Do you like, do you like, because when I first started comedy, like I said, you're 10 years my senior, but when I started 10 years ago, I heard a lot of comics just go on and say just no jokes attached, just say rude shit, like awful stuff mm -hmm. on stage with no joke attached. And then when they get off and they go, I can say whatever I want. I'm a comedian. You know, they use that. Do you like now? Because for me, I grew up in a world where I'm always accountable for what I say because I've been on TV for 12 years, you know, on live TV. So you're accountable for what you say. Do you mm -hmm. like it more because you're a smart comic as well that you are held accountable or do you not like the accountability? Listen, it's all based off what's happening now in, in the times. So like you say, those comics you're talking about, they're just not funny. You know, like most comics aren't funny. All right. That's this is the thing. Yes, any, any, anybody can become a comic. Anybody can say, hey, I'm a comic. You know, anybody can just like they, as long as they put it in their Instagram profile. Now, all of a sudden, they're a comic because they have a pen and a notebook. And an actor. It used to you be. Do that it used to be. The, oh, they used to be. They had a MySpace page and it said comedian page. So now all of a sudden they're a comic. Like most comics aren't funny. And like I said, let me just go back to my original point in the very beginning of this episode. It takes time to cultivate an act and make it great where people understand what you're talking about. It takes time. It takes years sometimes, you know, uh, it, and and when you see that finished product, then you go, OK, boom. Wow. But they didn't get there right away. So people the, those kind of comments you're talking about that say that those are people that are not thoughtful. Listen, we just lived through the Me Too movement. All right. Po pre Me Too movement. Maybe you had a bunch of misogynistic jokes. Maybe you had jokes that you're talking about women in a certain way. The Me Too movement happened, and then we then men learned this isn't this isn't nice or whatever. So now you have to like now be smarter about how you're going to talk about things. You have to be more thoughtful. Like you still might want to say jokes because like I still want to say jokes about women. They are fifty percent of the population. Okay, you know what I mean. Like it's like it's not like I, I I've said this on my podcast and I'll say it here. If I was doing jokes about horses all the time, just horses, and horses were like, yo, man, what about the ants? You, you got no jo jokes about the ducks? Why are you just talking about us? In that case, they would be right. I'm picking on horses because there's a multitude of animals I could talk about. If I'm, if I'm making jokes about women, it's because there's only two. <laughs> there's men, there's women, okay? And then, and then the ones that want to switch, okay? But... That's it. I'm not, be, you know what I mean? So, but if, if I'm telling jokes and then somebody says to me, hey, I'm kind of getting the impression that you hate women. That means to me, I could do one of two things. I could be like, ah, fuck you. You don't get me. Or I could be like, that's not the message I want to put out. So let me make, let me redo this joke. So they get my point. So they can laugh the way I'm laughing on the inside about this subject. We don't always achieve that because like I said in the beginning, we're not as brilliant as we think we are. You know what I find interesting is I think, and this is for everybody that listens to this podcast, that watches this podcast. Whenever you see a comic in a club, that is not their final draft. So they should not be Bro. judged on it. Like, like my thing is, if a reporter comes out and writes about a comic at a, a nightclub and it's not his special and it's not, and he's not shooting, that's like that reporter writing in shorthand and turning in his first draft and say, print this. That would never happen. Yeah, it goes through so many eyes. It goes through so many people reading over it, correcting his mistakes and then putting it out. 
So this whole spell thing check. Of, you know what I mean? Check, <laughs> you got people saying you missed this word. You know, you you spelled it. So it's a thing where anybody that judges a comic going to a show where he's practicing. Because Can that's I make really one all, adjustment? Yes, Can I make please. one adjustment to something please, that you're please. saying right now? Because this one thing I disagree with, even though I, 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 I'm with you, though. That's the sentiment of what yeah. you're saying I agree with. What I'm saying is this. You can judge. Look, look laughter is a judgment. It is. it is. I don't mind somebody coming to the show and being like, the judgment is, this ain't funny. Okay? Yeah. I'm fine with that. That's judgment. What I'm saying is, don't weaponize your judgment on social media. That's my problem. Especially See, when what, it's not the final product. Yes. Or even if, it, it, check this out, even if it is the final product, but at that point, if you're putting this out for mass consumption, if you put a special out for mass consumption, you're saying, you're hey, everyone, you're ready for the criticism. Okay, yeah. the judgment. Mm -hmm. You're ready for the judgment. But I agree with you. When you're just at a comedy club, you're just at some random comedy club, and now people are putting up their phones and, and recording, you know, it's like, damn. You know, but I got to tell you, and, and I'm glad you're bringing this up because when we were out in Arizona, I had a situation. I had somebody like, I'm I telling bring these it up. jokes. I wanted you to bring it up. I had, yeah. these, I had these like transgender jokes and I'm very positive. I, what, here, here's what I'm saying. What I believe is very positive, but there is still a butt of the joke. You know, I'm saying like, I, you know, I don't care. Do you whatever, but I have jokes about it, you know, because I joke about everyone. You, it's, it's like you want to be a part of society. To me, being a part of society is also getting made fun of. When you come to a comedy club, I'm not going to alienate you and be like, well, I'm not going to talk about you in this environment. I don't have any ill intent. Anyways, somebody goes on the line and she's mad at me. I, you know, you're you know, you're so hurtful and all this kind of stuff. Right. And I take offense to that because now this person is weaponizing their sensitivity against me. But at the same time, though, I'm listening to like, well, also this person. I'm, my message isn't getting through to this person and a person who is a part of that community. So that makes me go, you know what? Let me let me think about this joke again. Let me think about, am I making the point that I want to make? But again, I was practicing. I hadn't done an hour of comedy in a freaking year. You know what I mean? So, so both sides are, what I'm saying is both sides are justified. You know, it's justified. You know, what my problem I have now is not that this person has this opinion. My problem is when they weaponize it against you. So now they go, well, now we're going to go on social media and this person is now going to be vilified because I don't like them. And I'm going to get yeah. all the people that support me to cancel them. Okay. That is the problem with cancel culture. That's the problem with people when they weaponize their yes. sensitivity and their opinions because, against someone. Because what's the line on sensitivity? Like I, I told you this over the phone, which made me want to. There do is no line. Points. There is no line. So it's so I did a joke on my first special uh, where it showed a picture of my parents and me. And I said the simple thing. I go, hey, you know what I love about this photo? And this is when I'm like six years old. I look. Exactly. Like I'm sitting in the middle of them and I look like both of them. Like I go, what I love about this picture is I know I'm not adopted. You take my mom's head, take my dad's head, squish them together. This little dude pops out, whatever. People that got adopted got mad at me and tried to cancel me for you don't understand what it's like being adopted. And I'm like, that wasn't even my intent on that joke. It, it was more about me looking like my parents. And that's where I saw how sensitive that line can be. Yes. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. And that's when I was just like, okay. But at the same time, I do believe in freedom of speech where people have the right to cancel people. I just think the sensitivity level at times is way too much. And another thing is they release the little clip that supports their cause, but they don't release everything. Like that's yes, my thing. Exactly. I want to see, I want to see everything i want to see yes. if we're talking about comedy and they make fun of a comedian i want to see that comedian's whole set then i want to yeah. see the next comedian that made fun of that comedian set to see okay what's really going on don't show me yeah, yeah, yeah. a little clip of something then tell me they went on for minutes about something show me that three or four minutes they went on so i can see it so i can judge okay. for myself Okay, so like what I was saying before when you were asking me about is it okay to say whatever you want whenever you want? What I was saying is what I say. It was all about circumstances. 
You know, it's all about because here's the irony of your situation. If you were doing a show at an adoption center, you were doing like to support some adoption uh, thing. You know what's hilarious? You could do that joke there and they would laugh. Mm hmm. That's the that's the that's the irony of it. If it was yeah. like you 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 were doing a fundraiser for adoption and you were there and you're the, the keynote speaker and you're making adoption jokes, they would all laugh. And you know why? Because they get the point of what this is about. And now they go, oh, we're just poking fun. Now they understand. Like I did a a, a show for Crohn's disease, you know, and I just did a lot of jokes where I was like, hey, guys, I know we're having a shitty time. You know what I mean? <laughs> And it was like, everybody was like, ah, you know what I mean? Because they're just like, they get it. You know, so what I'm saying is people forget the point and the nature of comedy. They've forgotten that this is just a way, another way of dealing with these things that we're dealing with. So those people that were adopted, their assumption is, oh, wow, you don't care about adopted people. You that is like they they immediately go to the most negative place in their head as opposed to going and this is to your point about what you're saying like you know read the news and and find the truth in that it's the same thing with comedy yep read the situation here's a guy who's just making a joke about him he's he's saying this is his truth it ain't nothing to do with you nothing discern discern between what jokes and facts are what I don't like is when people go, you don't care about adopted people. You know what they need to add to the end of that? To me. Yes. Don't make what you're saying fact. No, no. To you. Because yeah. when you say that, now we know this is just your opinion. But they go on the internet and they make it, they try to make it fact. I'm saying this about Michael Yo. Michael Yo hates adopted people, you know, and then that 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 becomes the narrative. That's what's wrong with social media. That's what's wrong with cancel culture is that we're making people's personal opinions, people's sensitivities, people's judgments, and they're weaponizing it against people without using your word, common sense. Absolutely. Uh, Abhishek, uh, Frank Martinez had a comment. He says, I guess you sound like Bobby Lee. I don't know if he's talking about me or you, but that's Frank Martinez. He, I don't understand I don't what, what that, that means. means. Okay. So Abhishek, this is the guy from India. He has a good question. He goes, what's the difference between a troll who just wants to get a rise out of people or a comedian with a controversial joke? Well, it's all about intent. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to determine what intent is. I mean, you know, a, a controversial joke, what does that really mean? You know, you have to even unpack that. And I mean, the really controversial joke is like, well, what's the person who's saying it? Or like, what's the point? Like, what's the point of this joke? I mean, there is a point of the joke. At the end of the joke, do you want people to feel this? Premise plus punchline. Premise and setup and punchline equal this point. My point is, whatever that is, if that point is being made or not being made, or if people agree or disagree, that's why people laugh. People laugh for many reasons. People laugh because they agree with the joke, or sometimes people laugh because they go, ah, this guy is crazy. Or they, you know, they laugh for different reasons. It's a visceral reaction to a lot of different emotions. People laugh at funerals. People laugh at weddings. People laugh for many during grief. People laugh. La- laughter is like a real common. That's why humor is such a important healing tool, right? So that a controversial joke and a troll. It's all about intent. I mean, if the, a lot of times that 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 intent is just just to be an asshole or just to be. Yeah. And of course there are comedians who are just like, Hey, I like getting a rise out of people too. Well then that, you know, that's a troll comedian then. Right. You know, but that doesn't like, who are you talking about? Like I, I would, I would imagine to say that the people you admire the most, the comedians you laugh at the most, they're not doing that. You, you know, so it's just all about intention and, and what the result, what the, what the point you're trying to get across. And like anything, if you disagree with it, you go to the worst case scenario. And forget exactly. about all the other stuff. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. Exactly. That's that's my point. You know, and but I'm trying to explain to you though, and this is what and this actually lends myself lends itself to the point I was making earlier. 
sometimes it's hard for people to discern because they have their own ideas in their head. They have their thoughts and they believe that they're right. So when you're listening to a joke and you, you feel justified, people feel justified. They hear a joke. They feel justified. They, yo, hey, man, I was adopted. You, you think this is funny for adopted people? And they, and they go on their tangent about that. They ain't wrong. That's their feelings. It's the same thing when you read a news story about the coronavirus or you hear a, a leader talking about this. It's the same kind of thing. They've made now they've made their choice. They've made their judgment. They believe this person because they trust this person. And then they move on with their lives and they come up with their opinions and they have this thing. So it's just, it, you know, it's it's all the same problems. It's all the same problems. I'm saying, you know, it's, it's really it comes back to what the person who's listening you know, being more worldly, being more like thoughtful, being using more common sense, using better judgment. But that's not so easy because well, look, even well, in the field, it's not so easy for people to be like, well, you know, they just hear a joke. It, 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 you know, it's like my mom has dementia. So if I hear dementia, I talk about dementia on stage because that's yeah, how yeah. I deal with things. You know, and I've had people come up to me and go like, oh, man, I've never laughed at that before. Thank you. My grandma had, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know, but there are going to be people who will be like, this is terrible. You can't joke about this. This isn't a funny subject. That's why when I do it, I have okay. to find a way to make it make it in a way people understand. I'm just we're just trying to we're trying to heal through humor. So going back to my initial question, is there any is there ever a time then where a comedian you believe should be canceled? Oh yeah, of I mean, course. can it get to can it get to a point yeah, yeah. where a comedian is up there? Because the whole pass of I'm a comedian, I can say whatever, which we've already talked about but is there a time like a comedian could be up there and you're like yo i would even be on board for canceling this too like is there ever that moment and what is that then? what is that well, moment well you have to understand that there's two sides to freedom of speech you know 100%. like like if somebody so i'm saying yes a comedian can say whatever they want and everyone else can say we don't like it <laughs> that's just so, and our point you know what is I mean? We're just saying we don't like people that try to cancel people off of jokes. So that's our freedom of speech to say that you can can't. And that's my thing is I don't care about the can't do it all you want. But this is my view on cancel. Call. Now, do I think some comedians go too far? Absolutely. But what I do, what I do is if they say something fucking crazy, I look at the body of work and see what kind of comedian they are. See, have they ever said this kind of stuff to other people? Or if like, for instance, if I said something crazy, I know a lot of the comedy community would be like, yeah, I know this dude. He ain't like that. You know what I mean? Like I, this dude is, you know, I, I feel that that would happen. You know what I mean? Because I, I'm based in integrity and things like that. But I can see me accidentally slip and say something and it goes viral. And then people are like, oh, he's this dude. But if you look at the history of me, I'm not like that at all. And I'm just saying before people pass well, people judgment. Aren't look, people aren't looking at the history. People the are passing they judgment. Just, they are yeah. passing judgment. And then that's just that's the end of it, you know? So it's like, so now we're in this situation where now we're like, you know, we're suppressing artistic freedom. You know, it's like because now it's becoming a thing where as a comic now you got to go, damn, do I even want to delve into this? Do I even want to go through the works of trying to figure it out? And in the yeah. process of figuring out, I might say something wrong, but it's in my process of trying to figure this thing out. And then there's somebody in the crowd who just like now it's all about that, too. It's all about, like, let's record this so we could try to, like, take someone down. You know, yeah. that. If, and, and by the way, if that's their intention, that has nothing to do with right or wrong. You know, <laughs> like, that has nothing to do with, like, you know, you're so right, because I have a stop Asian hate joke that I have yet to do, but I will. But I'm wondering, like, because we, I, I got to try it out. You know what I mean? So I have it in my head, but I know it could offend people at the end, too. You know, so you know, it's kind of the thing where I want to try it. I go up every night, and it's kind of like you have to wait for that right crowd to be like, you know, because you can say certain jokes, and we both know this. And if it hits, you know this crowd is down for that kind of stuff. And then you say that same joke and the crowd is like, you see them get small. You like, uh, you know, they, they wither. And it's like, ah, these are the type of people I'm not going to see. But I'm the type of person. I don't mind when they wither because I feel confident enough that 
my, my point's coming. Just wait for my point. It's going to get there, you know, and I think that that's okay too. You know, it's like we yeah. just different styles. There's no right. There's no right or wrong way. You know, there's no right or wrong way. You know, I, and I don't mind it at all. You look at someone like Bill Burr, you know, he's pushing the envelope because he, when, when you get to his point, then you're going to be like, oh, okay. Oh, I all it. right. Now I, see, now I see where you're going, but he, he might start off with like, you know, here's what's wrong with Asians. You know, it might start that way. And then, like, when you finish, you go, oh, I see what he was doing. You know, it, it, there's different styles, man. You know, I Did mean, I, my, I just think, like, go ahead. Go ahead. Did I ever tell you the story about Bill Burr? I did. I was in the opposite room. This is at South Beach Comedy Festival. And this was at the beginning or end of the year. And he was starting his new hour. And to watch, this is the bit about, I can't, he had a bit about hitting women, right? A big uh -huh. bit about hitting women. And it was his first day doing it. It was in South Beach. And to watch this man work, the first thing I believe, and I'm paraphrasing, but it seemed like the first thing he walked up and on stage and said, everybody agreed, him, yeah. And he goes, you know, you should be able to punch women. Like that was the first thing out of his mouth. <laughs> that's, how he does it. that's how he does it. That's his style, you know? So and he and, and the point is, he, 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 he uh, let me finish this up. Go ahead. So he says that. It's a weird reaction. And he goes, you know, he goes, looks around and goes, ah, you know what? So he says a joke, a different joke, gets him on board. And this was the great thing. He goes back. Now let's talk about punching women. And he goes back <laughs> to it, says a little piece of the joke. Nobody kind of goes for it. Says in the, the whole hour, he kept going back to punch till he found the things that worked in it. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, Man, that is beautiful. This dude started the show with something that made people awkward and then drop it. Kept going back to it after a joke yeah, that worked. Yeah. And in the middle of the show, he started finding the pieces that worked. And then when I saw the special and then he put it together, it's like, it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like, we're not, you know, the comedy people that go to comedy shows now are not like, it's like, I like that they said, no, no phones. You know, yeah. it's, it's just because it's like, can we just experience this right now? Can we just have this moment without worrying about all this? Other, you know, it's just that's the thing, man. It's like it's so it's so nerve wracking. You know, it's like they don't respect the art form. They don't respect the process. You don't understand. It'd be like sitting in a room watching Picasso paint, you know, for, you can't be like, you know, when he's sketching it out, be like, this dude sucks. Yeah. <laughs> He this just mixing dark. paints together. You're like, what's he doing? He just mixing like, paint. This shit is whack. You know, work. Like, that color is not like, what, work. what color is that? You know, you can we can we wait for the finished product, man? Or any artist? You know what I mean? Don't even have to be like, or you. Cause, but here's the thing, though, and it's still okay if at the end you're like, not into this guy's paintings. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. But can you respect the art form? Can you respect the process? There's no respect for the process, man. There's no yeah. respect for the process. They, and, and, and you know what? And as a comic, as a comic, when you're when you're even when these concepts that are out there in the world, it's like people don't even like 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 if I have a problem with like I have a problem that we have this like one track mind about everything we deal with when we how we deal with everything. So it's like so I, I have jokes about Asian hate. So I'm like, now that's the new hot racism. So when somebody's like, is it no Asian hate? I'm like, no, oh, no, don't worry. This guy's Mexican. You know, because like, oh, you know, you know what I mean? Like, that's all we care about is Asian hate. All of a sudden, like, that's the big thing. It's like it's all over the place. I have a problem with that. I'm like, let's just get rid of hate. You know, that, so my that the, that would be the point I would be trying to make if I'm telling jokes about this. It's about see, like you know, see, in my let's point, go into hate. Let's go into hate. Let, let's let's talk about like get rid of hate. You know, you're gonna have laws against just Asian hate. I find that ridiculous. I find well, it ridiculous because it should be hate. all. It should be a blanket for all hate. And this <laughs> you know is what I mean? no, see see. I think you. I think the end point is right, but I think also uh, what a lot of what what I how I would disagree with that is that it's easy to say stop all hate in Black Lives Matter when you're not a target. When you're the target, it's a different story. It's a different story. Like if you're the target of something, then you it's it, it, you can't say broad statements like that. Now, if you all if you really want to live in this all lives matter and we should stop all hate, then you have to realize the problems and correct them. If you don't yeah, correct the problems, the, that won't it's, happen. But the it's broad the targeting. statement, it's the targeting. It's a and that's yeah. the thing. I'm not, what I'm target, saying is I'm still okay. not. I know, but I, I know, but I exactly. If everyone's a target, then let's talk about the targeting. I'm not wrong. Having just one thing is still ridiculous. 
but so if we're not a dis- targeted disagreement. More than, but if somebody's being targeted more than others, you have to recognize that's a problem. But, but what? But that is not a fact. It's it just fact. popular in the news media. No, what I'm saying is like. If 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 the it's like when uh, pit bulls were in the news about biting people, they were like, "Oh my God, there's a pit bull problem." But when you looked at the statistics, it it, it just it just was like they were talking about it more, so it seemed the like it was a bigger problem are up than it was. One hundred and fifty to two hundred percent in hate crimes against Asians. It's up. Those they, are facts. No, 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 I no, I get that, and that was and that was because of the, the targeting of like you know the fucking yeah, president absolutely. of the United States saying what saying the things that he's saying. But again, that's where the issue is. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is like, so the issue is about, to me, about we can't have the le- leader of the free world making people, you know, get, make, make racist people feel like it's okay to be racist. What I'm saying is like, if that's what we're talking about, if that's the issue we're talking about, like that's going to solve the problem. Like, like so, so we know the root cause. We know the root cause. So it's up because of how certain people were talking about it. That's the cause. The res- if we're trying to just solve the result of saying like, Hey, stop hating Asian people. You know, it's like I think I think the most people who are like, you know, it's like when you when you hear these things and people go, when you hear people talk about transgender people and they go, oh, most of us are just like, hey, I don't really care who's gay or transgender. I, I don't care about race. I don't care. I think a lot of people feel that way, but like whatever's in the news cycle, whatever is being hyped up at the moment, they want to make that feel like this is the most important thing in the world, and there's nothing else that's more important than this. And, well, I mean, um, my, I, I, you know, you could swing that either way, but my whole thing is yeah. when people make like, cause I get, I told you I'm black and Asian when people ask me about black lives matter and stop Asian hate all the time. And I'm just like, and they go all lives matter and we should stop all hate. I go, that's very easy to say if it doesn't affect you, you know, like to me, like it, it's very easy to say everybody's lives matter. It's, it's almost like, you know, like, we should all not be slaves, but I own two of them. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, but, when you're yeah, the target when you say, of something, when you're the target of something and that target is increasing, the numbers are increasing, that's a problem. And to get to the point where we stop all Asian hate or all lives matter, you have to fix problems. It's like, I want my car to run correctly, but if something breaks down, I need to fix that problem so it can run correctly. That's all I'm saying. And this is not a big discussion about or anything like that. No, no, but what I'm saying, though, but if your car is breaking down because the roads are messed up and not fixed and your tires keep popping and because the road has full of gravel and, uh, and it, you know, you know, it's, it, that, that's the cause. So you could keep fixing your car, but we got to fix the cause. What's causing that? Uh, what's we gotta causing fix that? that, too. We got to fix yeah, that. So too. it's like so. I, but I just I just. I, like as a person of color myself, as a person who's been, you know, discriminated against and all this kind of stuff, I, I I can say, I can say, hey, yes, we need to get to the root cause of why people hate. We need, to, you know, that. you know, it's like, you know, we can't have the, the 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 our leaders making it making people feel galvanized to have their prejudices and stuff be, you know, unchecked. No, I I I, I can say I want to deal with that. Uh, Cause I, cause we've been, it's, it's like with the police, like we could keep, we could keep talking about police brutality all we want, but it's now a hundred years and the same shit keeps happening. So we could keep saying, you know, all you we're going to say but it, you it, until we get to the, cause it, cause it never helped. It, it yeah. hasn't helped. It hasn't helped talking about this for the, this, all this time. It's all just gestures. You because know, it's, it's all just like, easier. you know, having, t- having t-shirts is not going to help people. So have, Asian, stop Asian hate. That T-shirt is just a gesture. It ain't going to do shit. We have to get to the root cause of why these things happen. We have to get to like, that's why it has to come from how we vote, who we vote for. It has to come from like laws against all, the, you know, discrimination, all these kinds of things. That's going to make real change. Symbolic gestures. I'm tired of them. I'm tired of them. Thoughts and prayers. That's all I'm saying. You know, thoughts and prayers. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. That's thoughts that's and prayers. <laughs> uh, if anybody has some comments you want to throw them in, ask us questions, go for it. I do want to uh, end on, you know, like I saw you shoot a movie lately with Ray Romano. Man, congratulations on that. I was so happy for you. How'd that all come about? Yeah, it was. Uh, well, you know, you just I actually auditioned, you know, <laughs> funny story about it, though. I, 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 do, yeah. I do the audition. Then it's like months and because it's coronavirus. And so everything, you know, things were like, you know, 
So then I, I kept asking about it. I say, I'm not, and they say, hey, you're in, you're in the running for that, man. They got you pinned, whatever. So it was like months, months would go by. I even I even shoot a pilot, what you know, in yeah. the process, you know, you know. And then uh, then I get to part, then I go. So I'm in my hotel room in New York, you know, and I'm waiting for. I had to quarantine for four days because I just got my second shot. Yeah. So they needed the two weeks. So I still had to quarantine. When you get to New York, if you're gonna film something, you got to quarantine for four days. So when the four days are up, I get this like. I get a like a no ID call and I don't answer because I don't answer no ID calls. You know, I don't know who the hell this is, right? It's funny though, funny story. Gerard Carmichael, a good buddy of mine. I love Gerard him. says to me, he called me one time and it was no ID call. And so I didn't answer. But then he texted me, yo. And I was like, oh man, I didn't know that was you calling. He goes, You got to answer no ID calls. You never know who's gonna call you. And my thing is like, that's his life. Yeah. Okay. And I, okay, his life. Because his story, he said to me. He said to me, yeah, I ran into Jay-Z and Jay-Z said, hey, I tried to call you a month ago, you know, so he's like, <laughs> okay, so Jay-Z's yeah. calling you. Okay, so yeah, that's your life. For my life, it's going to be some stupidness. Like, you know what I mean? Michael trying to call me. This is no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know what I mean? I don't know who's calling. I got some, you know, it'd be like a fake social security call with right. no ID. So cut to, I, I'm in New York. I get this no ID call. I don't answer. Then I get a text message. Hey, Eric, it's Ray Romano, you know? So... <laughs> So I call, I got I knew I was gonna talk to him because he's the director of the movie, you know. But still, I was still geeking out because he, you know, have you he, ever he's talked to such him a, before? No, I've wow. never talked to him before, and he's got such a distinct voice that I'm thinking really? I'm, I'm yeah. on my phone and I'm like I'm in an episode of where everybody loves Raymond, you know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, and he's like, hey man, thanks for being in the movie, and listen, we're gonna go into the city. I want you come, want you come with us. We're gonna get some pizza. We're gonna go to Caroline, not Caroline's, go to um, the no. cellar. You know, we're going to go to Comedy Cellar, you know, and I was like, oh, shit, I've never even been to that. I've never performed at the Comedy Cellar. So we go. I, I get a spot. I'm walking in with the fucking John Gotti. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like so we performed and, you know, we had a great, you know, he's such a down to earth dude. It was like it was really a great experience, you know. But anyway, the funny story is like <clears throat> he's telling me about the movie and I go, well, thanks for the part. He goes, you know what? I had you in mind from the beginning, he says, you know, he's like, you know, I, I wanted you. I knew even before you auditioned, I wanted you to be the, the, the guy. Right. All right. So cut to him in my trailer. And, the, and I get the clothes, you know, and uh, the clothes, it says actor. And then it says, uh, what's that guy's name? Mohammed Amir. Oh, that, 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 what's his yes, <laughs> Amer, yes. Amer, Amer, Amer. You know, it says that on the clothes. And I was like, oh, man, what's this shit? You know, so, you know, me, I go right to his ass. I go. So when did, uh, when did uh, Amir uh, drop out of the movie? He was like, what? No, no, no. He uh, he was a local hire. You know, he was a New York hire, and we we just thought we were trying to save money and blah blah blah. And I was like, you know, I just I loved. I, <laughs> 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 you know, it was just like it was just one of those moments where you like you had like I was like, oh, you just bullshitting me, but you know, it's fine. You know, you know, you know what I mean. But it just I thought I it was funny. You just, went up to him and called him out. Oh, oh, you know, you know. <laughs> and guess what? You know, that, that, that's you for the rest team. of your life. He'll remember you yeah. for the rest of his life for that moment right there. That's great. That's, how'd it go? So it how'd was, it go? It was great. I had a small little part. I, I like this. It's a really. It's actually really. He wrote it and directed it. You know, it's about this Italian family. You know, this like really like tumultuous Italian family in the in the you know in the city. And it's sort of loosely based off his own life, sort of. You know, and it was really great. You know, like I was just watching them do these scenes because a lot of the because the stuff I was at was like. I, and I was like, I was like the local DJ that they that they invite to all the parties. So yeah, I'm at the christenings, I'm at the weddings, I'm at you know, <laughs> I'm that guy. You know, DJ Joey Bones was his name. You know what I mean? And so I'm just there at the parties all the time. You know, and so you know they always go to me. You know, and it was um. <clears throat> so you get all the funny was, reactions and the funny. Lines. Yes, yes. That's I think amazing. I was the comic relief in a That's in a dramedy. Comic relief in a dramedy. So, you know, hopefully when it comes out in like eight years, because you know how movies, <laughs> <laughs> you do a movie that you're just like, oh, yeah, I did that movie like three years ago. That's just coming out now. So, look, it's I like, know uh, I know you're a seasoned vet in comic uh, in comedy. Did you feel pressure performing in front of Ray Romano? No, no, <laughs> no okay. not at all. OK, I wanted to show him, hey, man, I'm just as funny as you. I, that's how I always approach everything. Go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't. I never care about that. I'm. I'm. All, I'm. I'm very competitive in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to go out there and I want to. Like, I want to like go Destroy. for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I just. That's just my the nature of how I like to do it. You know. So now I'm at the cellar in Las Vegas. I got passed, so I'm. I'll be going back and forth. 
How was it performing at the cellar your first time? Like, like oh, being in that it, legendary room. It just, rem it just reminded me of the comedy store. That's all. You it's know, like it just was like, yeah, or the OR. It's more like the OR. OR yeah. You know, it just reminded me of that. I just felt like, all right, cool. I mean, I, I, but I, I felt like it's about time. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's how I felt. But that, but that's how you. Know, I, I always, I always have a chip on my shoulder. That's how I do everything. No. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. You know. But it's what, just like do you have any it served projects? it served me. Do you have any other projects coming out or anything you can talk about? Yeah, I did this movie Hero Mode, and that's coming out in theaters soon. And they, they actually, I think they want me to go to Austin for a premiere of the movie. It's it's a, it's a family film. It's called Hero Mode. Bobby Lee's in that too with me. Oh, Joe, Bobby, Bobby Lee, Bobby. Al Madrigal. Uh, yeah, it's like Mira Servino stars. Uh, what's his name? Um, um, what's his name? Sean Austin. You know the mm -hmm. the Hobbit guy. He he's one of the stars. You know, so it's like it's a really like you know it was an independent film and. You know, it, it, but now they, you know, they got a good cast and it's, it, you know, it's going to be a family film. I don't know how do it's going to be. You know, if you're into family films, this will be a movie you want to watch. Do you feel momentum right now? Momentum, no, because I've been in it long enough to know that this there's ebbs and flows. Yeah. Like okay. if I just if I had just started in a business and stuff was happening, I'd be like, oh shit, I'm about to skyrocket. <laughs> but I already know that it it goes like this. I yeah. already know that it go, you know, goes like that. You know, it's like I had my oh, workaholics. Oh my god, I did workaholics. I did blunt talk, and then I did fucking you know the Showtime show, and then it was like yeah. Yeah. you know. Then he's like you know I did a special. And then it's like yeah. you know. So I just know that it's ebbs and flows, and so so now I'm just comfortable in my environment. I know you know it's like I know I'm gonna get work. That's how you have to feel, you know. Even though I don't feel like that every time I do a job, when I'm done, I'm like I'm never gonna work again. And this yeah, is it for me. I, I think that's I, I'm, I think, I'm done in the business. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's. I, think, I, just, I just book a pilot. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh shit, I'm back in the business. <laughs> yeah. Now, did the pilot go, or can you say or no? You know yet? Bro, I don't know. Okay. And like, I every day I'm checking the news because like they're now <laughs> making. Uh, I I feel like they're making um, as they're making choices right. Like li like okay. literally, you know, it's funny you say that. My managers just sent me a message talking about. I feel like we should know in the next few hours. Like this is what I'm saying. Like they're making choices right now, you know. So hopefully the next time I talk to you, I'm like, "Hey, we did it!" That's or I'm gonna awesome, be like, man. "Shit, how am I gonna pay my rent?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, good luck so, in that. And fingers so, crossed out there, people. Yeah, fingers crossed for. Hey, man, thank you so much for popping in, man. It got yeah, heated, yeah. but it was fun. It was fun. It wasn't. I mean, it's not. Dude, it wasn't it's, I mean, like, come on. It yeah, yeah. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? I'm like, trying, it's just I'm like, trying to you, dramatize it. I'm trying to make it seem like <laughs> if they're just too in, no, oh you know, my God. Can I tell you something? You know what's funny? It's like, this is, this, is what, this is what's funny. Like, people don't know how to have discussions. Yeah. You know, so I, I I like looking at your comics. I don't have the Facebook page open. I'm looking at the comics, you know, and it's a lot of it's a lot of you know. Oh, dude, calm down, take a breath. You know, they they because they don't they don't they don't know how to have a heated discussion with someone, and then all right, it's done. We made our points. P put that away. Now we can go yeah. on to something else. I mean, that's the nature of like really. You know what, what? What happens with people is that they have these things, and then, then their personal feelings get involved, and then now you're just done. Like you don't know how to like be animated. Yeah. You don't know how to be animated when you're talking with your friend, and then that it, you know, then that's it. See what happens is they think you can only do that with unimportant subjects. Yeah. Like they think like you know, like we're just talking about who's better, LeBron or Michael Jordan. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. They think well, that's that's an unimportant subject, so it's okay. You can also have an animated discussion about the news media, the coronavirus. Hate, love, comedy. You can. It's okay to yeah. like as long as you have the wherewithal to be like, okay, we're done with that part of it, and you know, or we could get to like whatever. It's okay. Like it's actually, it is actually okay. People, relax. Yeah. You relax. <laughs> <laughs> Not us. You Cause, relax. Because as you can see, we're fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you just get on our level. <laughs> 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 All right, buddy. Well, I'll talk to you soon, man. Have a great one, okay? You're cutting me like, right? You, I think I'm off. I ain't never no, talking about that. Have a, I, said, have, I said, have <laughs> a great one, Eric. No, no, no. I know, but I'm saying like, like, like right after you, I th I think we're off. Then you hear me talk shit about you after I said all that. <laughs> after I said all that, you, you I think I, I haven't logged off and I'm like, I ain't never talking to that Michael Yo again. He don't know what he, you know? <laughs> Well, the only thing I learned from you this episode was to pick up no ID calls. I, I do know that. I do know that. Thing. Pick them up, bro.
pick up them no ID cards because you never know. Might be like, hi, this is Oprah. Oprah's assistant <laughs> calling for Michael. Yo, uh, Michael, she would like to talk. You you know, and you over here like, I don't know who this is, and you just hanging up. No man, <laughs> answer those no ID calls. It could be Jay Z. <laughs> there you go. All right, bro. Have a great one, man. Yeah, man. Talk soon. Right.